हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द इंजीनियरिंग केमिस्ट्री कोर्स वंस अगेन वी आर स्टार्टिंग अवर ई लेक्चर सीरीज टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द इंजीनियरिंग केमिस्ट्री प्रैक्टिकल्स इन विच वी विल लर्न अबाउट हाउ टू डिटरमाइन द अमाउंट ऑफ फ्री क्लोरीन इन द गिवन सैंपल ऑफ वाटर बेसिकली दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट इज द टाइप ऑफ आयोडोमेट्रिक टाइट्रेशन in this titration the water sample in which chlorine free chlorine amount is to be determined this water sample is titrated with hypo solution hypo is the sodium thiosulfate in presence of starch indicator using potassium iodide as a source of iodine so in this titration water sample is titrated with hypo solution but before doing this titration we have to standardize the hypo solution and for the standardization of hypo solution we have to titrate the hypo solution with standard potassium dichromate solution so in this experiment we will perform two types of titration one is the standardization of hypo solution in which the hypo solution is titrated against the potassium dichromate solution second titration is titration of water sample with the hypo solution but before starting the experiment we have to know some basic knowledge about the free chlorine and the chlorine used in the water we all know that chlorine is used for the disinfection purpose in the water sample because chlorine kills the microorganisms or the bacteria present in the water so when chlorine is added to water some of the amount of chlorine is used for the disinfection purpose and this amount is known as the chlorine demand of water the chlorine after the complete disinfection of water remains in the water sample is known as the residual chlorine or the free chlorine this free chlorine or residual amount of chlorine is necessary and very important for the disinfection for further disinfection of the water and the most common method for estimating the free chlorine amount in the water sample is the iodometric titration so now we are clearly understood that the chlorine added in the water sample is used for the disinfection of the water and this amount of chlorine which is used for disinfection of water is known as the chlorine demand of the water and after the complete disinfection of water the amount of chlorine left in the water is known as the residual chlorine or the free chlorine and for the determination of the residual chlorine or free chlorine amount in the water sample iodometric titration is to be performed so two things are now very clear one is the chlorine demand second one is the residual chlorine what is chlorine demand here chlorine demand is the chlorine used for the disinfection of the water and what is residual chlorine residual chlorine is the amount of chlorine left after the complete disinfection of the water and how the residual chlorine is to be determined this residual chlorine can be determined by the iodometric titration how we can determine it when potassium iodide is added in the water sample in acidic medium the chlorine free chlorine present in the water reacts with the potassium iodide and liberates the equivalent amount of iodine this liberated iodine can be determined by the titration with the hypo solution what is hypo hypo is the sodium thiosulfate so amount of chlorine present in the water is equivalent to the amount of iodine liberated and this iodine consumed equivalent amount of hypo solution so by knowing the hypo amount of the hypo solution we can determine the amount of chlorine present in the water in this titration we are using the starch indicator starch is the type of adsorption indicator 
starch gives deep blue or violet color with the iodine but as i discussed earlier that before titrating the water sample with hypo solution we should first do standardization of the hypo solution and for the standardization of hypo solution we are using here the potassium dichromate standard potassium dichromate solution when potassium dichromate mixed with the potassium iodide in the acidic medium it liberates the equivalent amount of iodine which is titrated against the hypo solution using starch indicator so before starting the experiments let us look here the reagents required in this titration potassium iodide solution since it is the iodometric titration that is why in this titration potassium iodide is used as a source of iodine because potassium iodide here liberates the iodine second is the sodium thiosulfate solution which is known as the hypo solution it is used as the intermediate solution in this titration third is the potassium dichromate solution this standard potassium dichromate solution is used to standardize the hypo solution two acids are also used in this titration h2so4 and the acetic acid and the starch indicator is also used in this titration starch is the type of adsorption indicator lastly the water sample so in all these chemicals are used in the titration of water sample with the hypo solution the reagents and chem chemicals required we discussed now the apparatus required in this titration burette stand burette conical flask reagent bottle pipette and the dropper so let us discuss the procedure of this titration this titration is performed in two parts in the first part the titration between standard potassium dichromate solution with hypo solution is to be performed in this titration standardization of hypo solution is done what is the meaning of standardization of hypo solution here that means we have to know we have to determine the exact normality of the hypo solution by titrating this hypo solution with the potassium dichromate solution so this is the first part of this experiment in which hypo solution is titrated with, with the potassium dichromate solution iodometrically in the second part of this experiment the titration of water sample with hypo solution is to be performed using a starch indicator and potassium iodide as a source of iodine so let us begin with the first part of this titration that is titration between standard potassium dichromate solution and hypo solution first step take a burette fill the burette with hypo solution take a conical flask and add 10 ml standard potassium dichromate in this conical flask with the help of pipette now in the 10 ml of potassium dichromate solution add 5 ml of potassium iodide and 5 ml of h2so4 h2so4 is here using to provide the acidic medium while potassium iodide is used to provide the iodine now as we added sulfuric acid and potassium iodide in the potassium dichromate solution it reacts with the ki and liberates the iodine in the solution due to the liberation of iodine the solution of color of the solution becomes brown now start the titration when solution becomes pale yellow add 2 3 drops of starch indicator in the conical flask when starch indicator is added to the conical flask the remaining iodine present in the solution 
forms iodo starch complex with the starch now when solution becomes pale yellow then only we add the starch indicator because when iodine is liberated in the large amount in the previous step so due to the liberation of large amount of iodine solution color so color of the solution becomes dark brown at this stage since iodine is a strong oxidizing agent so oxidizing power of the solution is very high so first we have to add some amount of hypo from the burette in the solution so that the hypo consumes the iodine and color of the solution becomes pale yellow to reduce the oxidizing power of the solution now when the solution becomes pale yellow add 2 3 drops of starch indicator as we add starch indicator the remaining iodine forms iodo starch complex with the starch and the color of this complex is deep blue now continue the titration till the blue color becomes colorless this is the end point of our first titration disappearance of the blue color shows that complete iodine get consumed with the hypo solution now let us start part 2 of this experiment that is titration between water sample and the hypo solution take a burette fill the burette with hypo solution take 10 ml standard water sample in the conical flask with the help of pipette now add 5 ml potassium iodide and 5 ml acetic acid in the water sample here acetic acid is used to provide the acidic medium while potassium iodide is used as a source of iodine when we add potassium iodide in the water sample this water sample contains the residual chlorine the chlorine present in the water sample reacts with the potassium iodide in acidic medium and liberates equivalent amount of iodine due to the liberation of iodine the color of the solution becomes brown at this point start the titration take the initial burette reading that is 0 ml and start the titration when we start take the titration the hypo solution added from the burette reacts with the iodine and iodine get consumed due to the decrease in the amount of iodine in the solution the color becomes now pale yellow at this point add 2 3 drops of starch indicator as we know that starch is the type of adsorption indicator which forms adds adsorption complex with the iodine and the color of this complex is blue so when we add it starch indicator in the solution the color of the complex becomes blue due to the formation of iodo starch complex in the conical flask now continue the titration till the disappearance of the blue color that shows complete decomposition of the iodo starch complex and complete consumption of iodine with the hypo solution take the final burette reading suppose this time reading will be the v3 ml these are the observation tables we have to build two observation table one is for the titration of standard potassium dichromate solution and hypo solution second is the titration of water sample with hypo solution calculations part 1 calculations titration of standard potassium dichromate solution with hypo solution using the normality equation n1v1 is equal to n2v2 we have to determine here the exact normality of the hypo solution so n1 is equal to n2 v2 divided by v1 here n1 is the normality of hypo solution 
V1 is the volume of hyper solution used with the potassium dichromate solution. N2, N2 is the normality of potassium dichromate solution. Since we are using the standard potassium dichromate solution, so we must know the normality of the potassium dichromate solution. Here we are using here 0 0.025 normality of the potassium dichromate solution. V2 is the volume of potassium dichromate solution that is 10 ml. So final formula for N1 is equal to 0 0.025 into 10 divided by V1. Now second titration is the titration between water sample and the hyper solution. Same normality equation we are using here N3V3 is equal to N4V4. N3 is the normality of hyposolution which is equal to the N1 because we are using here this same hyposolution. V3 is the volume of hyposolution used with the water sample. N4 is the volume of water sample that is 10 ml. V4 sorry N4 is the normality of water sample which we have to determine and V4 is the volume of water sample that is 10 ml. So finally here the N4 is equal to 0 0.025 multiplied by 10 multiplied by V3 divided by V1 multiplied by 10. So 10 to 10 cancel out here and final formula for N4 is 0 0.025 into burette reading with water sample divided by burette reading with the potassium dichromate solution and we know that the strength of chlorine in the water sample is equal to normality multiplied by equivalent weight of chlorine. So here the strength is equal to N4 into 35.5. 35.5 is the equivalent weight of chlorine. So final formula for the strength is equal to 0 0.025 multiplied by V3 multiplied by 35.5 divided by V1 grams per liter. But we know that amount of residual chlorine is to be determined in the parts per million. That is why we are multiplying this amount to the 1000. So here the final formula for residual chlorine is 0 0.025 into V3 into 35.5 multiplied by 1000 divided by V1. This is the amount of residual chlorine in parts per million in the given sample of water. Precautions. Always use distilled water for making all the solutions. Indicator solution should be freshly prepared. Volume of starch indicator should be same in all the titrations. That's all for the today's experiment. Thank you. Keep smiling and stay safe always. Thank you.